Hello everybody. What we have here today is a Samsung phone that I picked up for about $7.99 on eBay. So this phone here, one of my friends pointed it out to me, and it's basically pretty good for the price, honestly. $7.99 getting you a whole Samsung phone? It's actually pretty good. It is, in fact, pretty good, because this is a Samsung Galaxy X-Cover Field Pro. This phone has a 1440p screen. It ships with Android 8 and 64 gigabytes of storage, a 12 megapixel camera, 4 gigabytes of system RAM, and an Exynos 9810, which had an 8-core CPU and a Mali G72 GPU. This phone also featured a 5400 milliamp hour removable battery, as you can see right here. So this smartphone right here, being from around like 2000, 2018 or somewhere, is a Galaxy X-Cover Field Pro. The X-Cover Field Pro was a pretty competent phone from around 2018 or 2019. Here we can actually see it booting. It's an unlocked phone because that was what the listing said, and I checked and it is in fact unlocked. Although, it runs Android version 9, which is still pretty modern. I already set up everything on here so I can enter up my password, which since this phone is personally used, I'm not going to share. Anyhow, this phone actually like works pretty good. I accidentally opened the Play Store there. But like, yeah. This phone is a competent phone. If we could go into settings here and we could go down to about phone and it's a Galaxy X cover field pro and um, yep, software information. We can see it's running Android version nine. Okay. Well, yeah, basically this phone is relatively competent for the price. I don't know any benchmarking tools for how to get, how to get on good frames but basically I could do a few day-to-day -day tasks on here like for example I can go on to YouTube I am in fact using revance client because using regular YouTube's unbearable here we can see it plays content in 1080p at high quality this is some crisp content here that's playing on the YouTube app at like 1080p or I don't have 1440 on this video it's running at 1080 60 Anyways, yes, video playback works on this phone. The camera, on the other hand, is in fact really good. In fact, I should have just recorded this entire video on my iPhone 11, but I decided not to because I don't have the right mounting hardware for it. But I'm going to take a picture of what this camera looks like to show you how good the camera is. And here we could take a look at the wooden surface of which I record my videos on, which is displayed right now. Here we could see some more close-up images, like a close-up of my military bag that I wear around with me, a close-up of the pants that I wore the other day, a close-up of my 1440p monitor, half of it being green, and a close-up of... Well, actually, it's not a close-up. It's a perspective photo of my keyboard, which is pretty nice. I'd say the camera quality is pretty good on this phone. The video quality, I've been told, is 1080p, is 1080p on the 30, which is fine. That's what you need to like capture videos and stuff. Although it's no Apple device of having 1080 60 or 4K 30. Here are two of my Mac Pro computers. 2000... Uh, no, it's a 2010 right there, and there's a Power Mac G4 right there. This is a test clip of my X-Cover Field Pro to test the video quality, which I'd say it's alright. I mean, it's not the best, but it's certainly not the worst. But it still is able to capture better photos of fabric. Then, like, for example, what an iPhone camera would be able to do, like my iPhone 11. Like, it's insane. I can't, I can't recreate that with my iPhone. That's how good the camera on this 
$799 phone here. Another great thing about using this is the buttons. You could press this button to switch between apps, and I can use the back button right here, which is really nice. It's really nice phone, and I can actually just compare it side by side with my iPhone 11 here. Yeah, there's my iPhone 11. They're, they're, this one's also a phone from around 2019, so they put up a good fight against each other. Having a phone that works is cool and all, but let's see how this phone holds up in the benchmarks. Here we have LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga running here in 1440. It puts up a good fight with near constant 60 FPS with impressive graphical effects. The game being from 2007 does factor into its speed and the fact that it has an Android port is impressive on its own. For PS1 emulation and Duck Station, we saw a nearly perfect 60fps in game, that being Gran Turismo 2 running at native res. Please excuse my poor driving skills, the controls are very sensitive. Being an older console, I never got to experience the PS1 first hand, so it's pretty cool that a smartphone that costs a mere $7 could provide a compelling experience. We are in Bomb Bomb Battlefield from Super Mario on M64 Plus, which runs perfectly smoothly at around 29 to 30 FPS. The game looks surprisingly good, and there are no graphical bugs whatsoever. The moving is a tad finicky, but that might just come down to be a skill issue on my part. I'd say overall, this phone is proving to be a pretty capable little emulation box. However, takes a bit of a turn, with the game running anywhere from 1 frame per second to 50-ish frames per second. Although it is really bad, I was still able to win a race here. GameCube emulation maybe isn't for this specific phone, but hey, it isn't half bad. Especially for a phone that costs like less than a, two cans of monsters, like, that's a really good fucking deal in my opinion. In conclusion, I would say that this $799 smartphone here is well worth the cheap price that it goes for. I feel like with any smartphone manufactured within the past, like, what, six years would be great at $7. Unless it's one of, like, the really cheap smartphones, then it might actually be a $7 smartphone. Anyways, yeah, that was the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Goodbye.